For complete setup, preventive maintenance, and safe operating instructions, please read the operator's manuals that have been enclosed with this tool package. The SFB TT20 Hydraulic Installation Tool, or Bobtail Swage Forward Tool, is designed for use with hook bobtail fasteners. This smooth operating swage forward hydraulic tooling directly contributes to longer tool and component life, while allowing extended tool maintenance cycles. To keep the bobtail swage forward tool operational, it's important to understand its care and maintenance. To begin, remove the anvil and puller. Remove the three anvil retention screws using an Allen wrench. To remove the anvil, use a spanner wrench, turning it until the anvil loosens. Then remove it by hand. Next, remove the puller. Remove the puller using the supplied wrench to loosen the locking nut. Note that the locking nut is left-handed threaded. Once the locking nut is loosened by the puller wrench, remove it. Using locking pliers, break the puller loose from its base and turn until it can be removed by hand. Next step will be to remove the protective plate over the back cap, which protects the rear section of the tool cylinder. An Allen wrench will remove the four hex screws. Leaving the screws in the back cap, remove the protective plate over the back cap. Notice that the back cap has a retaining disc with a keeper. Take the keeper out by removing the two Allen screws. This is the keeper, and this is the retaining disc that we'll remove before disassembly. Now you're ready for disassembly of the back of the tool. Note, if the back cap is too tight, you'll need to put the tool in a vise to break it loose. To remove the back cap, insert a 1 half inch Allen wrench, break the back cap loose, and thread it all the way out. Remove the wrench and lay the tool on its side. Using a long rod, insert it into the back cap. Hammer it out the back of the tool. Now that the piston and back cap have been removed, screw in a Huck assembly bullet, which is available in the Huck tool service kit. Drive the piston out by tapping on the assembly bullet. Remove the piston bullet from the rear of the cylinder. Now that the tool has been completely disassembled, it's ready for inspection. Start by inspecting and changing the O-ring seals on the cylinder. Check the interior bore. Also, make sure to remove all seals, backup seals, and wiper rings, and install new ones. Next, inspect the piston, checking carefully for scores or scratches. Change the seals, both inner and outer. Inspect the stationary back cap where the puller is mounted, making sure the finishes are intact. Check the inside threads. Make sure all seals and backup rings are replaced. Finally, inspect the swage cavity, checking to make sure there are no scratches or score marks on the finish. With the inspection process complete, it's time to reassemble the tool for use. Begin with the piston and the piston bullet. First, checking the piston bullet to make sure it is free of ridges, scores, or marks. Thread the bullet into the piston. Apply lubricant to the assembled piston, including the rubber rings, the bullet, and the front of the piston. Also apply a small amount of lubricant to the seals in the front and on the inside of the cylinder. Next, insert the piston. Using the end of a wooden or plastic mallet, gently tap it into place. Unscrew the bullet from the piston. To assemble the back cap or puller holder, first apply lubricant to the outer surface as well as the O-rings.
Now thread in the back cap with the wrench. Continue threading until it bottoms out. Next, we'll adjust the back cap to line up with the scallop hole. Reinserting the wrench and backing up the back cap until it lines up. Reinsert the retaining disc. Replace the retaining plate and the plate screws. Tighten with an Allen wrench. Now replace the end cap cover. Rotate it until you feel the screws fall into place. Using an Allen wrench, screw them in until they're tight. Next, check for hydraulic leaks by hooking the tool up to the power rig. Plug in the electrical connector and plug in the disconnects. If hoses or electrical connections show wear, refer to the manual for replacement. Now we're ready to cycle the tool and check for leaks. Checking the front and back of the tool carefully for leaks. Once you're confident there are no leaks, you're ready to install the anvil and puller. Turning the tool upright, first install the puller. The puller assembly is made up of the puller itself as well as a jam nut. Be sure the puller is completely extended from the jam nut without it coming off. This will ensure the puller will bottom out in the anvil. Install the puller, keeping in mind it has left-hand threads. Rotate it in until it bottoms out. Next, using the puller wrench, tighten the locking nut. To do this, put the wrench directly over the top of the puller and turn until it tightens completely. Note, be sure to tighten it to the recommended 70 to 75 foot-pounds of torque. To install the anvil, use locking pliers that are available through a local hardware store to compress the puller. Once the puller is compressed, place the anvil over the puller. Now, release the locking pliers and tap the anvil down. Using a spanner wrench, tighten the anvil down to the cylinder. Be sure to tighten completely. The whole piston will turn when it's been tightened. Next, install and tighten the three Allen screws that keep the anvil in place. To test the tool with a fastener, start with a hook bobtail pin and collar. Using washers to simulate the fastened material, assemble the bobtail. Push the fastener in as far as it will go into the tool. Pull the trigger and the tool will swage the fastener. Notice the bobtail features unique tabs designed to indicate when the fastener is properly swaged. The Hux Swage Forward Bobtail Installation Tool is now ready for operation.